Number 17 then from the multiple choice in paper one of the 2015 old hire. The last batch of multiple choice. What have we got? Here are the components of two vectors and two statements. Another multiple selection. First one. If t is for four fifths, then this is a unit vector. Unit vector means its length, its magnitude is one. So the magnitude would be the square root of, that would be three fifths squared, zero squared, and that says four fifths squared. When you square a fraction, you square the top and square the bottom. That's nine twenty fifths, there's nothing there, and that's sixteen twenty fifths. Well, that's 25 over 25, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. So, yes, it is a unit vector. What's the next one? 2. When t equals 1, the vectors are parallel. So that means when t is 1, are these vectors, quite simply, a multiple of each other? And it doesn't matter if they go in opposite directions. There is a fancier definition of parallel vectors. And that is when their cross product, but you don't do that in higher, is zero. Are they multiples? Well, if they're multiples, then taking this pair, then it should be negative 10 times this one gives you that one. It should go that way for all the components. Negative 10 times 1 is negative 10 times 0 is obvious. 5 to negative 10 is 2. 2 times 3 is negative 6. Yes, they're multiples of each other, so they are parallel. It doesn't matter if they happen to be going anti-parallel. So that means I'm looking for both statements are correct, and that would be D. Number 18. Oh, number 18 was actually one of the ones in the new hire where you had to show your working, but still just for two marks. This circle meets the coordinate axis at exactly three points. Well, it's quite a long question compared to some of the other ones in the multiple choice. So what are the centres? Half it, an opposite sign, makes it 6, 5. So if you just plot that, 6 along, 5 up. There's the centre of the circle. Now it can have various sizes of radius, but if it's to cut the axis, then it'll have to be big enough to reach them. It reaches this one first, because it's only 5 away from this. But to reach this one, you'd have to go 6, and that's when it would just graze it. It would cut that twice, because that's 5 away, and if I'm going 6, it's going to go beyond it. So if you just go exactly 6, if you make the radius 6, then it will touch 3 times, cut 3 times altogether. But now you've got to figure out what k is to make it that. It's quite long compared to all the rest of the questions here so far. Well, how do you work out the radius? The radius formula is... It's the square root, or I could just square that and leave out the square root sign. It's the centres squared, so 6 squared and 5 squared. Take away the number at the end. Now the radius is 6. So 6 squared equals that. Taking the k across, k is going to be, and taking the 6, o 6 squared over, which will knock that out, k is going to be 5 squared, which means k is 25. And 25 is answer C. Number 19. This was also in the new hire paper one. Again, just for two marks. Compared to the last question, this is actually very short because it's almost like a trick question because it's like misleading you by saying this area is a half, so what's this integral? because you're used to using the integral as an area. But the area is just an interpretation of the integral. The integral just adds up all the numbers as it goes along, the positives and the negatives. That's why you split graphs for bits above and bits below. So since this is symmetrical, and you know that each of these parts would be a half, these would actually be negative halves. So to just evaluate this integral, it would go, that's a half, and then it would come back down to zero, and then it's going to add on that last part, which is negative a half, because it takes the actual values. It's just that when you work out areas, you just take the perceived amount. It may be negative, but that's a chunk that's visible. So negative a half is answer B. Number 20. The only stationary point on the graph of this is the point AB. 
What are the coordinates of the only stationary point? That just identifies any particular point, really doesn't matter if it's stationary. On the graph of y equals negative of f of 2x. Well, there's two things that's happening. Outside of f, that affects the y coordinate. So this says the new y coordinate will be the negative of the old one. So it's going to go to negative b. Inside the bracket, it affects the x coordinates. And you probably just remember it as do the opposite of what it says. So it's not going to expand it by 2, it's going to contract it by 2. So if it was originally at A, it'll be now down at a half of A. So where's that? A half of A, negative B, is A. Oh, put it here, A.